Constitution, Article 1, Section 4, the right of the people peaceably to assemble, to consult for the common good, and to petition the government or any department thereof shall never be abridged. Shortly before noon on February 21st, 2012, I quietly took my place on the ground floor of the Wisconsin State Capitol amongst the welcoming people ringing the interior of the rotunda. Although promptness has never been my forte, being late on this day was simply not an option. Over the previous year, I had eagerly followed and supported the Solidarity Sing Along from afar, admiring this leaderless, ever-changing cast of characters and their tireless quest to sing truth to power in our house of government every weekday at noon. Through the miracle of the internet, I had stayed abreast of developments and even participated in a handful of outdoor SSAs when my work schedule allowed. But with my, un or, but with my employment and our family business winding down as my father's retirement approached, this day marked the first time I had the opportunity to add my name to the pantheon of Wisconsin Winter Soldiers who had journeyed inside the People's House to lift their collective voice from its marble floors for an hour in song. Colorful songbooks were arrayed on the ground floor, and the first floor balustrade was decked out with flags, banners, and signs, cleverly ridiculing the overreaches of Wisconsin's governor, Scott Walker, and his right-wing extremist Republican allies. This vibrant atmosphere had carried over from Valentine's Day the week before, when hundreds had marched from the UW-Madison campus on one end of iconic State Street to join with the sing-along inside the state capitol on the opposite end. In a recreation, yeah, that's worthy of applause. In a recreation of the UW Teaching Assistance Association-led march that had kick-started the Wisconsin uprising exactly one year earlier. Standing inside this day, Memories of the historic protests of February 2011 washed over me. Back then, a peaceful storm of chants, buttons, signs, and blue fists of solidarity blanketed the Capitol Square in the heart of Madison. This resolute and empowered mass of humanity was protesting a draconian union-busting budget repair bill introduced by Walker, who informed us that it would be passed in a few short days by his legislative majority controlled by rabid Tea Party attack dogs, whether we liked it or not. Once again standing in the Capitol in February 2012, I soaked in my surroundings with nervous excitement and anticipation building as reality settled in that I was about to become part of something far larger than any individual. As the clock struck noon, these proud citizens who had gathered throughout the rotunda swelled into unified song. As it had for more than 200 consecutive weekdays, the Solidarity Sing-Along began with the lyrics that have become a powerful rallying cry for generations of Americans in the seemingly never-ending war against social injustice. We shall overcome. We shall Solidarity sing-along was born on Friday, March 11th, 2011, when a gentleman named Steve Burns showed up at noon at the Capitol, a handful of songbooks in tow. The books contained ten well-known songs of protest, some of their lyrics rewritten to reflect Wisconsin's struggle against right-wing extremism. Warmly received by those present, this small, experimental gathering of harmonious dissenters seem to have tapped into the reserves of a powerful civic energy, 
still bubbling after a demoralizing turn of events two days earlier that saw the Republicans in the state legislature use underhanded maneuvers to pass their union-busting legislation. The throngs of citizens who had crowded the square through those long, cold days in February 2011, a mix of reborn activists rediscovering their protest lungs and newly awakened activists discovering their calling, eventually had to return home to all corners of the state. From there, the fight raged on to save Wisconsin and its progressive traditions from the constant assault waged by a corporate oligarchy and the radical right-wing politicians whose seats and votes they had bought and paid for. While contemptuously ignoring the voices of the citizens, the Walker-led Republican Party has been hell-bent on ramming its uncompromising ideologies down our throats, courtesy of an assembly line of model legislation drafted by the American Legislative Exchange Council, or ALEC, a menage a trois of wealthy corporations, conservative think tanks, and right-wing state legislators, according to my state representative, Chris Taylor. Women, workers, the poor, the LGBT community, native peoples, consumers, public education, the environment, health care, reproductive freedom, First Amendment rights, our inclusive voting system, clean and open government, democracy itself. Virtually nothing has been spared from the dictates of a tyrannical one-party majority and its billionaire puppet masters. Yet in spite of these relentless attacks, here was an eclectic collection of individuals who simply refused to give up, showing up at the Capitol every weekday from noon until one without fail to sing truth directly to power in the people's house. What had begun as an enigmatic experiment in direct democracy quickly evolved into an ever-present thorn in the side of Scott Walker and his Republican allies. By continuing to hold the fort, the solidarity sing-along became a symbolic representation of those massive crowds, tracing its lineage directly back to the nearly three-week occupation of the Capitol. Anyone who sets foot inside the Capitol's expansive rotunda is almost immediately taken aback by its visual majesty. The marble ground floor naturally draws you to the center, and your attention is pulled upward by the lines and curves of the columns and balustrades on the different floor, the mosaics that adorn the walls, and a stunning mural that soars far overhead in the Capitol Dome. The entire building revolves around the rotunda, a physical manifestation of the ideals espoused by fighting Bob La Follette, Wisconsin's former governor and the pioneer of the progressive movement. The architect